All right, guys, welcome back to another video. The Bud Light's out, P-Bear's helping. What a boy. And if you've been around the channel for a while, you know what that means. We've got new fish. We've got one going in this tank, one going in the 40-gallon planted tank. So let's take a look. All right, so just been back from the fish store about five minutes and we just float in this fish in the Iwagumi planter tank. And let me just take you into the other room because that's where we float in the other new fish that we've got. Darth Vader keeping up the lid there. Love that, what a helpful guy, just, just brilliant. So we're just gonna keep these floating and temperature acclimate them for probably like 20, 25 minutes and then we'll be getting these in the tank. Both of these fish are something I've been interested in for a while, so just thought I'd pick them up. One of them might need to go in their own tank at some point, but we're just gonna see what happens eventually. And hopefully he'll be all right in this 10 gallon Iwagumi tank for the time being. There he is currently. If you can take any guesses as to what he is, let me know in the comments. Don't cheat and watch the rest of the video and then let me know. This guy, can be a little bit of a picky eater um so luckily for him we've got some brine shrimp that's currently on the go so let me just unplug the airstone real quick and show you these guys so these are a microscopic food almost live food which is not only great for fish growth but also your fish's appetite as the living and the move ever so slightly as soon as you put them in the water which entices the fish so this is just some footage of some of my fish eating the baby brine shrimp that i put in their tanks and as you can see they're swimming a tiny little bit it almost looks like a, a little vibration on the camera but this just entices the fish into eating it anything that is actually moving by itself they're more likely to go for rather than the flake food or the pelleted food you can obviously get normal and the vast majority of tropical fish onto that food but there's nothing better than baby brine in my opinion so it's absolutely brilliant for smaller fish like your tetra more of your bigger fish tropical wise like your angel fish and even some of my bigger cichlids will actually eat this baby brine as well so as you can see in this clip my blue acara will eat it the bigger angel fish will eat it my blood parrot will eat it my gold spot red spot red spot severum will eat it as well so just a brilliant food if you're interested in this at all i got this little um piece of equipment from aquariumcoop.com um and Corey's actually put together a really neat package in terms of creating your own brine shrimp and that kind of thing there's plenty of videos on youtube as well on how to hatch your own brine shrimp so take a look at that if you fancy giving it a gander, but a really cool product and something that your fish will definitely thank you for. So on that note, let's get the brine shrimp plugged back in, which will keep them alive until we're ready to feed them to the new fish and the current fish in the temporary fish room a little later. And let's get back to acclimating the new fish. Apparently though, before we can do that, P-Bear needs a pet. So there he goes. He's had a rough day sleeping and stuff. You know, dogs live their life, don't they? Anyway, uh, we're, we're gonna get this guy in here. We've gone through the acclimation period before on our video, I'll leave a link top right hand side of your screen right now if you wanna check that out. But as you can see, acclimation was done and it's now time to add the pea puffer into this aquarium. I have looked into pea puffers a little bit and I do understand that they can be a little bit nippy. Um, so I am gonna be keeping tabs on this guy, um, especially with the nine, eight or nine um, neon tetra that I've got in this tank to make sure that I'm not seeing any nip fins or anything like that. The good thing is that this guy has got plenty of nuisance snails in this tank to keep him busy. That's partly the reason that I got him. Another reason is that quite frankly, they are just a cool, cool fish. So now he's in there, we'll come back to him in a little bit and show you him in a little bit more detail. It's now time to get this guy in the tank. And this guy is something that I've been 
looking for for quite a while. They're not as common in the hobby as what I believe they should be. Um, and this is a fish that's actually going to go in a tank that I've got planned in the fish room that's going to be an angel fish, a black neon tetra tank and some of this fish. Um, so I think this will be really, really cool. Again, if you've got any ideas of what this fish might be right now, let me know in the comments before he goes in. Same process of acclimating. And there he is. If you don't know by now, it's a Keol cichlid. So these guys are from South America as well. Um, they don't get quite as big as some of the other cichlids and they do have a more peaceful temperament. Males on these guys are probably maxing out around four or five inches, but they are meant to be very, very peaceful. So this is a fish I'm looking forward to keeping. They can pretty much go with any community fish, but can also do pretty good with angel fish. So that's what I've got planned for the future for this guy. So we'll see what happens in that regard. But in the new fish room, I'm thinking uh, some sort of a, not, not a, not a biotope, but maybe more so of a biotype um, with some driftwood, some floating plants, some angel fish, tetra, and some keel cichlids. And this guy is one that I happen to find at the local fish store. So I'm gonna see what this guy goes. Maybe I'll just keep him. Um, he seems to be doing perfectly fine right now. And by all accounts, um, they feel more comfortable when they're in a group. But this guy at the fish store was actually one of the ones in a tank by himself and he seemed completely fine with geophagus and that kind of thing so decided to take a chance on him as he'd kind of been separated from other keyholes for you know however many however many weeks however many months since he's been in the fish store so that seemed like it was a pretty good idea um, and he's certainly doing pretty good now as you can see just exploring at this point he's been in the tank maybe 20 25 minutes and he's out in the open and he's looking around looking for some food in that piece of java fern there so i think he's going to settle right in and i have no doubts that once i get feeding the baby brine shrimp to him um later or maybe tomorrow afternoon he's going to be eating with the rest of them so that's the keel let me know in the comments what you think to this fish if you've ever had this fish before what your experiences are with this fish and now let's go check on the pea puffer and see how he's doing so let's bear in mind this guy's probably only been in the tank now 35 40 minutes so it's probably going to be a bit shy would imagine he's somewhere near the back trying to find a little bit of cover and it looks like he's yeah he's over by the left hand side near the back of the heater so we'll just get a little bit of footage of him in here and then we'll kind of leave him to chill out for the next few hours and then i'll come back and get some footage and i'm sure he'll be out in the middle of the tank with the uh with the rest of the neon tetras and hopefully not uh nibbling on the fins i'm i'm hoping that he'll have enough nuisance snails in this tank to keep him busy and uh, obviously we'll be feeding the baby brain shrimp in here as well so should have a little bit of live food knocking around for him to stay busy and uh, keep off those uh, tetra tails here we are about three four hours later guys and we're just feeding a tiny little bit of baby brain shrimp to the puffer tank as you could see, they were they were swimming or vibrating, however however you want to say it. But let's just take a look when these guys go in and see if you can see any of them moving around a little bit. But you can definitely see how quickly the tetra are going for them. Something about this baby brown shrimp, it just makes the fish go absolutely mental, which is really, really cool to see. Definitely... Uh, more more intrigued than other types of food the puffer doesn't seem to be too too bothered about it to be fair but let's just hold tight for a few minutes and see if he uh see if he comes out and about five minutes later here he is front and center of the tank i don't know what got him comfortable whether it was the uh him seeing all the uh nuisance snails in the tank and realizing this is a this is a pretty good spot for him but there he is found a new spot at the top of that rock near the java fern there's plenty of places in here where he can he can kind of go to cover and 
stuff like that so i don't see it being too much of an issue but we just like i said we're just gonna have to take it day by day and if i need to move him tanks we're gonna have plenty of little tanks in the uh, new house for him moving forward so if he has to go in a plant a tank by himself we can uh, we can certainly do that but really really cool fish um i've kind of always wanted one to be fair and puffers are definitely something that is, is just really cool in the hobby and you never know i might get into uh, potentially a bigger puffer in the future so if you've enjoyed this video guys and you want to see more videos like this please make sure you subscribe down below hit that bell notification let me know what you think to the pickups in the comments do you like the p puffer which is actually the smallest puffer fish in the entire world and do you like the keel cichlid let me know what you think down below and we'll see you on the next one thanks for watching